I'm Venetia and I'm delighted to be joined by two beautiful sisters. They are really inspiring and they're doing such wonderful work for this incredible movement. Lucy and Tiffany Watson, hello. hello. How are you? Very good. good. How, How are you? you? Oh, oh. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so just related. <laughs> um, I'm very well, thank you. I'm so happy to be here. There's such yeah. a good vibe. Yeah. Definitely. Good vibes only. Um, so I want to wind back the clocks a little to when you guys were growing up because obviously that had massive influence on your lifestyle choices today. Yeah. You grew up on a farm in Surrey, right? Yeah, yeah. that's correct. What was that like? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was like a dream come true because I think our father was, knew how much we loved animals and thought it was like the best environment to grow up in. And, you know, for us, it was just like surrounded by animals 24-7. But we didn't really realise, I think, from, well, I was six, Tiffany was about four when we moved there. <laughs> Yeah. Um, we didn't really realise that, it, you know, the other side of it, which was, well, they were all being killed, you know, yeah. being sent to slaughterhouses. I think we only saw the nice side of them, like, growing up on yeah. the farm, and we Did would you get to, like, them. cuddle yeah. them and oh rear them? We, we, we like, have stuff as the sleeping. lambs, and, like, yeah, in our house. we would, ha you know, we, we, I had so many ducks, I had, like, 27 ducks, <laughs> and I used to, <laughs> like, like full-on cuddle them, and, like, they were beautiful and loving creatures, yeah. um, and they actually all got killed by a fox, which was really upsetting, oh. but, um, <laughs> yeah, it was, you know, better we, than a human, <laughs> yeah, but our Natural. farmer, actually, um, thought it was important to educate us on a lot of things, and he took us to certain places, and we yeah. kind of learnt through him a little bit more about, you know, He sort of showed us the honesty, and yeah. decided to take us to a slaughterhouse when we were younger. How, yeah. whoa, whoa. Well, How, well, I, actually, yeah. I, don't, I don't even know if it was a slaughterhouse. It was like, it was a, it's where people buy the animals to kill them, I think. Okay. But sometimes they do killing on sight. So I saw, like, a... a calf being sorted which was you know really at shocking. a really young age yeah, yeah. really young age um, and from then on I, I was like I'm not eating animals I, yeah. I still didn't really understand what was happening you know as a child I think there's a lot of secrets in animal cruelty in, in all these industries and I think you know your parents tell you what to eat and you just think it's food you don't think it's things that used no. to be alive you just yeah. think that is food and I'm supposed to eat it and then as soon as you put two and two together, you're like, oh. I think it's also school as well. Like, everyone around you at school is eating meat, so you think that's the norm to do that. Mm. <coughs> and you don't really think about the connection. But then, obviously, from growing up on the farm and we, you becoming vegetarian... We got more of an insight then, than most ch ch yeah, children would. Yeah, we sort of found out and instantly were like, we don't want to eat meat. But I never, at that age, thought about the dairy industry or yeah, anything like that. Yeah, we didn't really think about it. That so, was a lot more hidden from us. Okay, so, but you, do you even remember eating meat? Because the vegetarian thing sounded like it happened very young. Yeah, I remember, I remember eating chicken. I remember being forced to eat something at school. Uh, I think it was, like, pork or something. And, oh, and a great pork, I don't think. Or lamb or something, something horrible like that. But that's all I really remember. Can you tell us a little bit? I saw um, an interview with you when you talked about stroking the Yeah, that was at school when <laughs> they wouldn't let me leave the table until I finished eating it. And um, so I was just, I just remember when I was really young just stroking it because I was like, I'm so sorry that I have to eat you. I felt really bad. So um, how do you think we can encourage the younger generation to make the connection? Like you guys did at such a young age because yeah. that's rare, yeah. really. I mean, I'm sure some of you guys have been vegetarians since you were really young. But yeah. I think I see, I meet so many vegans who have been vegan for two months and were yeah. omnivores before that. Um, it's so hard. I think as well, like just to give you guys a little insight into sort of more at home life like our dad still lives on the farm and there's still very much slaughtering that happens okay there. so it's still an active um, and we've actually got two brothers that we we have a different mum there's we've got a stepmother half so brothers. they're half brothers and they actually it's so hard because they live in the same environment that we were brought up in yeah but they, they full on meat. say you know they'll have pet pigs and then they'll be like oh we ate our pigs <laughs> last week oh. and we're like yeah. What? And how, it's, do you, it's, how do I you cope with that? It's so hard. Well, I, mean, I have we, to we hold really Lucy back from sort of <laughs> going in. I'm like, stop. Yeah, um, I, I try so. I'm like, but you know that they died of really painful death. Yeah, and they I'm didn't like, want to die. And like, they, they just think, like, what? I think our youngest brother actually takes quite an interest in things. Like, yeah. I turned up to lunch the other day and he's like, how old is he? He is nine. nine. And he's okay. like, is your bag leather? And I was like, no, it's not leather. And then he sort of like takes an interest in things like that. And yeah. he... He, but he still eats meat and he I think yeah. it's because it's all down to parents really unfortunately if your parents are telling you there's absolutely nothing wrong with it and it's the right thing to do it's quite hard to see past that but I think yeah. you know in order to help children we need to encourage schools to educate kids yeah. from a young age you know you're taught to love animals you're taught you know 
a, a cow goes moo and a pig goes oink and all these things. You're taught to love them, but you don't ever get taught actually what, what the processes behind meat and the food that people are eating. So of I course. think we've got to encourage yeah, I think schools it is just to start education, education really. um, children. So when did you guys make the full transition to veganism? Um, well, Lucy, Lucy I was like vegan first. two years ago, but I... <laughs> This is so crazy, but I really didn't know that, like, the dairy industry was cruel or the egg industry. I just thought it was, like, the norm and, like, this is what was supposed to happen to animals. And I thought that, like, cows... I just but milk, so dumb. Cows I thought, make milk for us, right? I yeah. thought cows, I thought cows get, just got like, milk. made milk without the calf being there. And I think a lot of people still to this day believe that. So yeah. many people. I remember I did a post recently... And I got so many messages being like, oh my God, I had no idea there had to be a calf. Was that your one? Or that was, I saw that one. With so, it had so many comments. Yeah, so many, so many people fighting. It was yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think as soon as I watched Cowspiracy, it kind of opened my eyes. And I was literally, I felt so disgusted at myself because I was like, oh my God, I feel like I've been living this you know, cruelty-free life my whole life. And I feel like I've been doing the best thing I can for animals. And actually, I haven't. because, But that is purely because these industries are hidden from us so well. And, you know, companies want to make money and they don't want people to see, you know, you see the adverts of the happy cow running around in a field and it's like for a milk company and it's, it's just yeah. completely... I think, yeah, we just mm -hmm. never really thought about it. And I remember my... Um, we had, I met someone when I was younger and she said she was vegan. And I was like, what is oh, that? Horse, um, yeah, horse carer. Yeah, and I was like, I, I could never do that. And I had no idea what it was, but I never really thought about it. And then Lucy called me one day and said, I'm going vegan. And I was like, why? And she was like, because, you know, I've seen all these things. And I was like, okay, well. You didn't think I was a bit crazy, didn't you? Yeah, I was yeah. like, okay, you do you. I'm going to, like, carry on with my life. But then obviously a few... I was like, you need to do it, isn't it? Yeah, I was like, leave me alone. No pressure. And yeah. then she was like, um, oh, I'm going to this Peter event tonight. Do you want to come? So I was like, yeah, sure. Uh, she didn't actually... Ingrid Great was, tactics, Lucy. Yeah. yeah. Ingrid was doing a talk there because she, cause she still loved animals, you know. Yeah. It was like... She didn't, she didn't tell me it was actually like a talk on the dairy industry. Okay. So I walked in and I was like, what is this? And um, after watching that, I was like, oh my God, never eating dairy again. And was that it? Yeah. How did you find breaking the news to your friends and family? Were you nervous about that? Yeah, <laughs> super nervous. Like... Actually, it's scary, you know isn't I'm it? I'm excited as well because I like to yeah. kind of shock people. And I like people to be like, <laughs> I like people to be like, oh my god, what's she doing now? And it's just so crazy or whatever. But it was, it was also just kind of like a, a way of me kind of teaching people because immediately they're like, why? Why would you want to do that? So then, you, as soon as someone asks that question, why? You, you're just free reign to just get in yeah. there and, and tell them everything. <laughs> Um, and actually, since then, like, our mum's gone vegan. Yeah, our mum's gone vegan. She's really supportive, so that was friends. really easy. And yeah, a lot of our friends have been open to it, and I think everyone's quite supportive of it, luckily. Still working on my boyfriend, unfortunately. <laughs> if anyone has any tips, please come find me after. Um, but yeah, still working on that, but it's, you know, it, we've definitely... Sl so, we've slowly, done. slowly, right? Yeah. 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 Definitely. I think it's just showing the sort of benefits of being vegan rather than telling people constantly like the bad side because people I've found don't want to hear it. Yeah, so if don't. you show them like the amazing like food options you have and the health benefits and all of these great alternatives, I think that's what encourages my friends personally rather than being like, you, do you know that quite, this happens. Yeah, You do have to be quite gentle. You yeah. have to be quite, you know, sort of it, do it in from a caring perspective rather than a, an attacking yeah. angle. Agreed. Um, what advice do you have for people? Is that so? You just think the more caring and loving we can be about it. Um, yeah, I think any time I've tried to put anything on Instagram just to inform people, people sort of say you're preaching. Why are you doing this? Like, stop being such a preacher. And I'm like, okay, I'm not trying to preach. I'm just trying to tell you. Are you are trying guys. to preach, and you should preach. Yeah, but I don't think there's anything. <laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong with preaching. That's how movement. Yeah, but I I found it as a negative. <sighs> I don't think people like it if you tell them the bad side. I don't think people want to hear. And I think, well, I think the best way to do it is to inf like tell people like the amazing, just like how amazing it is to be vegan. And show how incredible your life yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. Colourful. And how easy it is and how there is great alternatives. But also, don't be shy to show them the things that are happening that are really yeah. pure evil. That people are like, I don't want to see that. But, you know, you need to see it because you need to know where your food is coming from. You need to know what's going on in the world every single day. Millions and millions of animals are, are dying. Yeah. So people need to see that. Otherwise, sometimes people will just be living in a life where ignorance is yeah. bliss. And I'm going to just, you know... I've had so many people that are like, oh, I, I just don't want to watch it because then I know I'd have to go vegan. And I'm like, 
Okay, so you know it's happening, but you yeah. don't want to see it because then you have to actually admit yeah. the truth and like. It's really frustrating, it isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I find it especially frustrating because I feel like I was that person once. Yeah. And so I'm like, I know, I know what you're doing this. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's not right. easier for you to, to even to talk to people. I find that people that have just gone vegan, you know, from being a meat eater, probably relate to people that are still eating meat or dairy or whatever a lot more easy than, say, us because we've, we've not eaten meat for It's never really been lives. in our lives. So. Yeah. So people kind when of When people are like, what do you eat? I'm like, them. what do you mean, what do I eat? I'm like... Do you eat feel whatever like, I want. Do you yeah. feel like you're eating more than you ever have before? Kind of like more yeah. variety than you ever have before? Um, yeah, I feel like we are so much more passionate about food. Mm, yeah. Um, and I think it's like being reborn. So you have to just rediscover all the kind of meals that you want to eat and all the kind of foods and everything like that. But also, I think it's also like now, like, oh, yeah, and it's just exciting because when the new brand comes out, you're like, oh my god, I want to try it. Oh my god, yeah. every new snack, I'm yeah, like, literally. literally. Yeah. We're like, we need to go get it. Like the Ben Jerry's dairy free ice cream, which yeah, like, we, we, went bought, hunt we haven't found it. Guys, I tried it. <laughs> you tried it. I tried the Ben and Jerry's. Oh my wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's I don't even like ice cream, but like, I need yeah, to. I don't like ice cream. I need to well, you'll it. like it. We went to like four different supermarkets, like, where is it? So my friend found it in a big Tesco. Other supermarkets are available. Okay. So Speaking of food, Lucy, you have a book called Feed Me Vegan. Yes. Um, what's your favourite dish from the book? Um, Tiff. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Pressure. There's so many, to be fair. It is so good. Um, it's beautiful. Yeah. Whenever it's I come around really to hers, she like makes me something which oh. is cute. Yeah. Um, what is my favourite? I do love the mac and cheese. Yeah. We yes. always used to be obsessed with mac and cheese when we were younger. Pasta so <laughs> that is one of the faves, I would yeah. say. You can't Definitely. beat a vegan mac and cheese. You yeah. can't. Um, and what about yours? What's your favourite dish? Um, I just like, you know, the cakes and stuff because I think that <laughs> <laughs> I think that it's really amazing. Like what I've thought is that cakes and stuff like that, I never thought you'd be able to make them vegan. Yeah. But from trying recipes and creating my own and stuff like that, it's it gets, you, you kind of realise that actually it's always better without mm -hmm. all the unnecessary ingredients like, you know, eggs or even milk and stuff like that. It's, they're just yeah. so unnecessary. It's all just a marketing ploy. Um, so I love those. I love making them for other people and surprising them and them being like, whoa, like you don't actually have to make sacrifices to do this. Like you actually are enjoying your food. Yeah. You know, that's, that's kind of why I did the book in the first place. It's just, I had so many people being like, but what do you eat? What do you eat? And, it, and it, it's just like so much. I eat so much. I eat everything and I eat and I love it. So I'm going to show everyone exactly what I eat and hopefully it'll make it easier for people yeah. to make the transition. I think the good thing of your book as well, it's not, it's like the recipes are quite easy to follow. Like some recipe books, it's like you have to get these crazy yes, ingredients chef, from seriously. like somewhere <laughs> not, that you have never heard of. Whereas all the ingredients you can normally get yeah. from like supermarkets. Yeah. So it's quite good. Cause yeah. Thank you. That's very kind Thank you. It's lovely. Isn't it? <laughs> um, and to take things further, mm -hmm. you guys are opening a restaurant. Yeah. I found out this this morning. I'm so excited. <laughs> we can now talk about this just because I think Tiffany Tiffany did announce it on me and Chelsea. Um, a, a month ago and we hadn't actually agreed to do that. Oh, and it went out <laughs> on the telly. Oh, yeah, she got annoyed. Yeah, yeah. and we had... Did you get a very angry phone call yeah, on the Tuesday yeah, morning? I did. Yeah. She got a, a lot of messages. <laughs> um, but Dad yeah. said we could, so whatever, let's okay, not get into it. it. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, but I think that, because obviously we, ha we hadn't actually even exchanged on the property when that happened, yeah. but now we have completed and we can talk about it and it is something that is going to be opening in March, we hope. <gasps> yeah. That's quite soon. Um, yeah, it's quite soon. Yeah, it's also no pressure. Go. I know. Yeah, so we are super excited just to add another kind of base for vegans to go and eat and enjoy their food and hang out and you know whatever. Is it in West London? Yeah, so it's going to be it's southwest. In, yeah, yeah, kind of where we're based. And what kind of menu do you want to have? Have you thought about that yet? We yeah, have. we have. We wrote it ages ago. We got really excited. Yeah, um, let's change it a little bit now. So we just want basically like really hearty meals. Like we don't want it to be. We want people to be able to go there that don't necessarily eat vegan yeah. day, to, day in, day out. And, you know, maybe it would help them kind of see that they might want to make the change if they, if they see that the food's good and they enjoy it. We want people to, yeah. be able to bring their, their meat-eating boyfriends, partners, friends, whatever, to, these, to, the, to our restaurant. Um, so it's going to be, yeah, breakfast, lunch and dinner and just, like, and drink. really, yeah, really hearty meals, yeah. like, healthy, but also, like, filling, like, lots of different, like, variety. We want to sort of please everyone. Yeah, yeah. amazing. Yeah. God, I will... <laughs> um, okay, let us talk about fashion because obviously style is something that's really important to you both. Yeah. yeah. And we're both very stylish ladies. Thank you. Um, when you went vegan, did you kind of tackle the diet first and then move on to yeah. fashion? Yeah, I did, yeah. It's crazy. It's like you just don't even think about it. It sounds stupid again, but 
I think I kind of convinced myself that leather was like a byproduct of the meat industry. I've, I hear people saying that even now, though. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, I, no sort of offence to anyone here that is, is still, that eats vegan, but maybe still wears animal um, We actually, we had a conversation about this, yeah. didn't we? Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. It's, I, I actually have a really close connection with Peter as a, as a group. You're, you're not just and a close connection, global ambassador. <laughs> <Yeah>. Global <laughs> ambassador, <laughs> mic drop. So I can ask them questions like quite easily and it, I have a lot more access to information than the average person would maybe have. Okay. But I, I just said to them, you know, please be straight with me. Is leather a byproduct or is it, is, is it something that animals are killed for? And they said, yeah, animals are killed for it. Like there's leather farms, there's, you know, cows that are kept on farms purely for their leather. They're skinny, they don't have any flesh on them, but they're skin looks great and Gosh. they use exactly for that and you know even wool I didn't even think about this until yeah. maybe a year ago and you know we used to have sheep on our farm and they would definitely be sheared and we, we even got involved sometimes which sounds really sick now did we? Um, yeah I don't remember that <laughs> we were really young um, you blanked it out yeah maybe. But, you know just seeing the sheep like you look at it from a whole different perspective even horse riding you look at it now and you're like do they want to have someone? I know. I was thinking about and, like, that the other day. Them? Yeah, yeah. And you just think, no. So don't. did you? Did you throw out your? Yeah. Le- yeah. You throw out your leather stuff. I had like a lot of designer leather bags. And okay. It was a really hard <laughs> moment, but I just thought I actually physically cannot carry this bag and yeah. walk around and be proud because I'm not proud of it. I hate it. It's a dead animal, and I don't want to be associated with it. So just got rid. Yeah. Okay. Did you and then, do the same? Yeah, I did the same. And then also with sort of makeup and beauty. Now it's Everything. like, Cleaning I products. would never wear anything that's like, like makeup wise tested on animals or yep. anything. I do find it quite hard to find vegan makeup, mm-hmm. but um, I can help you. Okay. <laughs> what did it's, you say? I guess I can you, help you. Just, that's something that I've, in the last four, six months, have really kind of gone to, I think. Yeah. I'm a sister like Lucy. Yeah. She she reminds me the way. No, you're um, like Tiffany. She's the organised cute one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think it's just every day sort of making, like, choices and checking things. And it's just become a norm, like, checking labels of everything, really. Yeah. Um, so, when, so, when, so, for example, when you go shopping... Um, what kind of things, how can people know whether or not something is cruelty-free um, or not? So, what, in terms of So, say, say if you walk into Topshop and uh, you want to buy a jumper a, and a pair of jeans. a surprising amount of uh, vegan clothing, you know, there's a lot of, uh, obviously, cotton, those kind of polyester, all those kind of things. Yeah. Yeah. like synthetic. Go f- for it, fabrics. but you just have to read the labels. If you see wool or if you see leather, um, I'm trying to think, well, fur, but they don't sell that there. Anything like yeah. that, then you just avoid. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of the high street brands really do so many vegan clothing um, options. Um, yeah, it's, I've got it's a actually bit of really easy. controversy about wearing faux leather recently. People being like, "You're advertising." Yeah, I got okay, that. Okay, I was actually going to ask you about this with faux yeah. faux leather. Yeah. So where where are you at with that? Do you think it kind of glamorizes that look a little bit? And it's oh, so hard. I, I don't. I disagree. I think wearing faux fur it just shows as a great alternative to real fur. I and feel like yeah. you don't need to wear real fur because you've got the amazing faux fur options. I think yeah. if you're that restrictive and you're like, no, like it's just so off-putting to everyone. It's so like, oh my God, yeah. we're and gonna scream down do, your throat. I do also respect people that do that because I do also think, you know, amazing, you're so committed to it. Um, but I think there's different forms of commitment. And for me, it's like, I have nothing to hide. I'm gonna wear what I wanna wear. People that know me will know that I'm vegan. Mm-hmm. They can yeah. question me all they like. I know that everything I'm wearing is not from an animal yeah um so and uh, yeah for people that are still making the transition it's it's important to show people that they can still be fashionable they can wear all the clothes that they want to wear yeah. and not have to wear and there is a great animals. alternative i think that's yeah. the main thing do you have any fave cruelty free brands for like bags and uh, shoes lucy and got me a really thing. nice matt and is it matt and that matt, matt and that bag yeah so matt and that bag for my birthday Keith. which was really nice um it's really good seller mccartney obviously but that's yeah. really expensive um it, river island new yeah look. river island new look do really good things zara Urban like Outfitters. just every, you know all the high street brands yeah, yeah. So um much. makeup we you mentioned makeup briefly just then yeah. tiffany um I mean, it's such a tricky one, makeup. Yeah. Where it was that, was it, is makeup and kind of everything in your shower something that was, you think is really important to have as cruelty free? Yeah. Yeah, 100%. I wouldn't buy something that wasn't cruelty free. But it's, um, but it's still about educating people because I think people that have made the transition to veganism might not necessarily know that, you know, pretty much all their hair, makeup, um, all these products will be tested on animals, will have animal ingredients in them because it's all hidden it's all coded 
Um, so, yeah, you really do have to research. It's a lot harder, yeah. I think, with sort of, you know, skincare and all those kind of things. But mm -hmm. there, are, there are brands out there that you can yeah. definitely Especially I find so use. many organic brands aren't yeah. actually cruelty-free, yeah. which is so really? confusing. And they have animal products in them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do you have any brands that we should look out for, maybe? I love Sukin. It's an Australian skincare, skincare oh, brand. It's Sukin. really good. Yeah. Okay. Um, Maria that's... Neela is a great really hair amazing. Brand. Yeah. Um, um, what else? Too Faced have some really good vegan products. Too Faced, Urban okay. Decay. Yeah, Urban Decay um, does. Chant um, Tabri is all Body Shop free. has so many yeah. vegan. Body Shop's Body amazing. Um, obviously, in the position that you are both in, you have large social media followings. You must get approached by so many brands to collaborate. Yeah. If they aren't, if they don't adhere to your lifestyle choice, do you tell them the reasons why you're not going to work with them? Yeah. 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 Well, we both have an agent who would just say, like, I'm sorry, she's not... Oh, so she does all of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. So she kind of deals with that, like, will say, like, oh, it's not I get people vegan, it's not... Messaging me with free fur jackets, and they say, yeah, do you want a fur jacket, and you can do a post for it, and I'll give it to you for free, and I'm like, oh, thank you so well, much. Well, I replied but saying, I just read my Instagram bio. <laughs> I hate you. It's literally there. Yeah. And, like, please, can you stop selling I replied fur? saying, I don't wear fur, and she goes, oh, we have some faux fur ones as well. I was like, well, I'm not going to advertise your company, which yeah. is mainly fur, and yeah. be like, oh, you can get a faux fur one. Like, yeah, you know. it's, it's all the time, brands all the time approach, because they just see, you know, a large following, and they just think, oh, I can plug, plug, plug. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we only, we're very specific about the brands that we work with. We yeah. only work with brands. I mean, I've had to cancel you know, deals I've had with, with brands that are, you know, worth Lucy money. had a Bentley and then gave it away because it was leather. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it, was, it was eight cows. Eight cows died. Eight. Eight, eight cows eight died cows. for one car. Yeah. 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 So who did you give it to? I give it back to them. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So these are just, really, this is a, these are really big things. That yeah, you have it's to things do all that people probably grow up dreaming of having and you just think, no, it's tainted with death. You don't want it in your life. And there's so many alternatives. I've got Mercedes and it's, you know, it's vegan leather inside and it's just like crazy and like, I love it. And, you know, you don't have to live like the slum life if you want to go vegan. <laughs> the slum life without a Bentley. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so good. Um, okay, you've both been really busy. We spoke about your book a little bit. Yeah. Tiff, you have created a, a brand called 365, yeah. which is so Cool. Oh, thank They're you. really, really lovely thank products. You. Can you tell them, a tell them, a tell us a little bit about them? Okay, so it's all vegan leather stationery. So we bought out the first product, which is a 2018 planner. Um, so yeah, we've used completely vegan leather, and normally with planners and diaries, which I didn't actually know, is that they are bound together using glue, which is normally from like animal products. So we've all done like hand sewn all of them. So yeah, we spent like a lot of time. Yeah, me and my quite business difficult? partner. Yeah. So when I sort of thought of the concept, um, I spoke to my business partner about it, and I just said like, completely want to use vegan leather, and make it completely cruelty free. And it did take a while because we wanted to get a really good quality fabric that sort of, you know, felt really nice and was really good quality. And that did take quite a while to find it. But we found like an amazing material and it's, yeah, it's been really exciting. Amazing. And you can have your initials on it. Yeah. Um, I don't know about you guys, but anything with my initials on my name, <laughs> I'm like, yes. yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that is mine. Um, so what kind of hopes and aspirations do you have for the community, I guess, over yeah. the next month, year, five years? What kind of direction do you see it going in? For the vegan community. For the vegan community. Um, I think just for it to grow as yeah. rapidly as possible. Um, I think it's amazing, you know, events like this where you see so many new businesses, like we were just outside at this uh, vegan cheese stand thing and we were just like blown away by the cheese. Was it really good? Oh, it's yeah, so good. it's so good. Um, and it's just like, I just think the vegan community is also such a lovely group of people. Like everyone I've met is so sweet and it's so nice having the sort of same goal and being able to talk about it so easily with everyone. Yeah, you just find that you gel with people so much better because you, yeah. just, like, you know that you have kind of really similar morals and stuff like that. But I think it's a huge step for people and anyone that is thinking about starting a business because they have a passion for veganism and they have a good idea, do it because I think it's growing. Yeah. I think it's... Um, and it's really fun seeing your passion be with successful. a sort of work as yeah, well. Yeah, it's, it's do something that you love, that you believe in. It's just like the best work that you can do. Um, and I think that I see all these people taking risks and, and creating businesses and investing all their money into these things and it's really paying off and I have huge respect for those kind of people but also have huge respect for the people that are going out and, and all the activists yeah. that a lot of them are here today. Um, 
going out, they're actually out there rescuing animals, you know, risking, you know, themselves, their, their safety, everything to go and, and help animals. And I think these are the kind of people we really need to get behind and we really need to support them and preach for them and help them. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I want. I just want us all to keep helping each other. Don't attack each other no. for things that you think are, are not as uh, on a level that you're on because everyone has their own journey. So be respectful of that. Um, but just, yeah, help each other and help us all grow and, and help other people get involved. That's really, yeah. Thing, yeah. I think that's a lovely note to end on. Uh, guys, thank you so much. Thank you're you. doing such inspiring things, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.